Hello everyone, my name is Athang, I am from Mumbai and today I am going to talk about the classification of Devanagari typefaces. Devanagari is an Indian script which supports over 120 different languages. Typefaces were introduced in Devanagari as recently as the late 18th century and the calligraphic style and the methods of reproduction have played an important role in how the script transferred into type design. This presentation is a result of an academic project in which I classified around 300 different Devanagari typefaces collected from various different foundries, past and present. Classification of typefaces is a natural process which helps the designer make an informed choice by analyzing and finding patterns through different typefaces. This can be an interesting way of identifying the similarities between different typefaces and identifying scope for novelty. Devanagari script has 14 vowels and 33 different consonants. To proceed with classification, we must first identify different morphological features of the Devanagari script. There is an upper matra line, which is as far as all the ascenders go, a headline where the Shiro Rekha rests. There are two main lines, an upper main line and a lower main line, which is used to identify positioning of different features. There is a baseline on which the stem ends and all the letters kind of uh, align. There is a lower matra line where uh, consonants with a U sound come. And then there is an even deeper uh, matra line, uh, which is where vertical conjuncts and uh, the combination of uh, uh, vowels come in. To proceed, we need to identify different features. The first one we see is a middle knot. There are two types of knot, a middle knot and an ending knot. The second one at the bottom where we, uh, we see is an U matra, which is also a descender. There is an anuswar, which is similar to a title on the top of an I, lowercase i. The next one we see is an ending knot, which uh, kind of ends at the ending of the letter, because that's how the letter is written. Um, there is a neck, uh, which joins the letter to the shiro rekha at the top. There is a loop, it is a, uh, that, and that's a loop and not a knot because the loop uh, is where the letter starts and it is usually open and not completely uh, covered. Uh, a knot is whereas uh, morphologically a knot is completely tied up, whereas a loop is just folded. Uh, then there are curve to curve joineries which are very common in Devanagari. There is another type of an ending knot. Um, yeah, and, and, and then there is, the next one we see is another curve to curve joinery an upper matra and a stem, which is for uh, the consonant E, the deeper E. The next one we see is a vertical conjunct where two consonants are joined vertically. And then there is a crossbar in the letter B. It's also seen in the letter SH. Now we'll get into different types of these features. So here we have a middle knot. So there is a filled middle knot, an open middle knot and a closed middle knot. Uh, Similarly, we have an ending knot. So there is a fill knot, a dragged or also an open knot or an, a closed knot. These are loops. Loops are usually towards the starting of a letter observed in bh and sh. Loops are also of three types or four types if you consider a select few calligraphic typefaces of a particular era. Uh, there is a partially open loop, a completely open loop and a closed loop. There is also a filled loop, which, but it relates to only a select few fonts. Types of scribing tool. The tool used to draw the letters makes a huge impact on the construction of the letter and the overall classification. The most common tool used to scribe a Devanagari letter is the canted tip or rather leftward canted tip, unlike the rightward canted tip in Latin. Leftward canted tip is used much more often and is a very traditional approach of uh, calligraphic writing in Devanagari type uh, in Devanagari script. Rightward canted tip or also the Roman tip which is used for black letters has recently been adapted for Devanagari typefaces. There are a, a few typefaces which use the Roman tip to scribe. There is a flat tip uh, also like a flat brush. We also sometimes observed in uh, monolinear typefaces. Then there is a round tip, um, also like a ball pen or a gel pen, which uh, 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 those are related to fonts, which mimic handwriting or are handwritten or script fonts. Then there is a flat tip, which is pressure sensitive and does not change its orientation. In terms of types of curves, there is a circular curve, which is observed in geometric typefaces, an organic curve, which is more humanist. 
then there is squarish which is more geometric and then there is very squarish there are also different types of contrast in devanagari fonts there is no contrast which is observed in monolinear fonts which is a, count, a counterpart to latin sans serif fonts then there is high contrast but traditional fonts which is observed with a leftward canted uh, scribing tool high contrast but modern which is which is which is the result of um, uh, a pen held in the way one would use to write scribe uh, let's say bodoni then there is also the gray value of the font which determines its use case whether it's going to be used for title or is it going to be used for uh, text so i analyzed around 300 different devanagari typefaces from various foundries ranging for the past 30 years um, a lot of these typefaces were only available as type specimens as the font was protected by proprietary softwares then i segregated these fonts into different groups on the basis of how close they looked to one another this is what i had ended up with so there are seven different types of devanagari typefaces which i identified one is calligraphic they might be revival or a personal style then there is traditional which is derivation of calligraphic typefaces but they have much more rationalized proportions uh, and are used for text then there is modulated typeface which are often used with latin serif typefaces there is script typeface which tries to mimic handwriting or is much more free flowing in that sense there is monolinear typeface used with latin sans serif typefaces and then there are decorative typefaces calligraphic typefaces can further be classified into two different section one is revival typeface and the second one is exploration in the first figure we see jaini which is based on the 1503 revival of the jain kalpa sutra manuscripts and the second one is gotu where we see the calligraphic style of sarang kulkarni the first one is a revival whereas the second one is a personal exploration both of them are calligraphic in its nature but are very different then we come to traditional typefaces the axis in traditional typeface is very similar to that of calligraphic typeface but the proportions here are much more rationalized even in traditional typefaces we will get to two different types of traditional typefaces the first one is the balbud style of traditional typeface balbud is a specific way of writing devanagari in marathi and sanskrit so these typefaces have more curves uh, have more fuller knots such so as in the third word you can see the loop is full in the first figure in the second figure we see a modern version of the traditional typeface in these typefaces the proportions and the letters are much more rationalized the curves are reduced in the case of the letter in the box we see the first figure is much more curvy linear whereas the second one follows much strict bounds the next one we have are modulated typeface most of the modulated typefaces have vertical axis they may or may not have serifs since devanagari never traditionally had serifs uh, they have high contrast and are specifically used for display purposes the next category is the monolinear typeface monolinear typefaces are usually paired with sans serif typefaces and follow similar uh, visual grammar they can further be classified into uh, three different categories similar to sans serif typefaces they can be rational with terminals and proportions similar to that of helvetica they can be humanist with proportions much true to the original devanagari way of writing or they can be geometric with much more circular and square forms it's often that it's the monolinear devanagari typefaces which experiment with different widths and weights then we come to script or handwritten typefaces these typefaces have usually a uh, very light stroke width have much more round or curvy proportions and uh, are a bit more eccentric in usual construction they are also derivative of one's handwriting or are used to give um, a bit of a flair while writing then there are decorative typefaces which are solely used for display purposes and have often weird quirks like tuscan serifs or weird ballpoint terminals and are completely different in terms of its constructions i further went on to put these typefaces on a map so that they can be visually represented and i can identify how one category of typeface transitions into another so this is my exploration of a font map for devanagari if you observe carefully we see 
all the different categories uh, line up next to its closest relative. In this, we can see uh, in this we can see how calligraphic typefaces are much close to um, traditional typefaces, similar to how calligraphic Latin typefaces are much more close to uh, serif typefaces. Traditional typefaces evolve slowly into monolinear typefaces, and even in monolinear typefaces, there can be different sections, subsections, uh, which can be uh, segregated. Traditional typefaces also blend slowly into a modulated typeface, as both traditional and modulated typeface both are modulated. But traditional typefaces have a much longer history and a and well-defined rationale in its construction. They also have a leftward canted uh, nib to scribe. In modulated typefaces, it's usually a vertically canted nib. Monolinear typefaces also slowly merge into modulated typefaces. And that's where you see these transitional fonts, which have elements of more than two different categories. Decorative typefaces are placed close to modulated typefaces because both of them have a, a very different rationale uh, and uh, they don't really blend very well with a more traditional type of type, uh, a more traditional set of typefaces. So towards the top left corner to the bottom right corner, you see a complete spectrum of different typefaces. This map led to interesting findings of how one category morph into a different category of fonts in various different steps. Over here, we have a transition from a monolinear geometric typeface to an organic handwritten typeface. So it and all of these steps in the middle are different fonts. So the two fonts we see in the middle are both transitional fonts, which step from one category to another. Another one we can observe is a geometric monolinear typeface, uh, a geometric monolinear typeface to a condensed but slightly modulated type. Another example is that of a modulated typeface to an expanded monolinear typeface. So the contrast reduces gradually and the letter expands and the geometry kind of changes. The next one we see how a calligraphic typeface morphs into a traditional typeface. Both of these typefaces have similar angle of cant, similar tool of scribing, but the proportions are much more rationalized and the use case changes from display to um, text. Yeah, so I collected these typefaces from a lot of different type foundries, uh, past and present, and uh, I would like to uh, give a huge thanks to my school, uh, IDC School of Design, uh, and my uh, guide, uh, Professor Girish Dalvi, who guided me through this project. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I refer to a bunch of different uh, books and uh, papers uh, related to uh, uh, on this topic. And um, that's my time. Thank you.